Welcome to, um, is it a TV series? Relocation, relocation, relocation? Anyway, this is all about whether you should move from London to the country or let your children move to the country and you stay in London or you move to the country and your children move to London. Basically, how do you manage uh, that big decision about where your kids go to school and where you should be based? And what we've got is a panel of four parents plus a relocation specialist. And what will happen in the next 40 minutes is we'll basically write that brilliant must-read Sunday Times magazine article about the joys and horrors of relocating uh, on behalf of your children. In the middle of the panel, uh, the person responsible for all of this is Hero Brown. Not only does she have a fabulous name herself, but her company also has the fabulous name of Muddy Stilettos. Uh, which is apparently a must-go website if you want to move uh, house in order to further your children's education. And then we've got the lived experience, I think it's called, uh, of the parents on our panel. We're gonna, we've got Candice Raby, who moved uh, with her husband to Dorset from London, from Hammersmith and Brook Green, down to Dorset uh, because her husband uh, got a job in Dorset and therefore effectively relocated and uh, her children were educated in Dorset. Now then we've got Paul Brackley, who fascinatingly, he and his wife have stayed in London, but their daughter has moved to the countryside uh, to further her education. And then we've got two Cottesmore parents. We've got Lucy Nethercott, who... M now, I told you we were going to have to bust this because I would never remember. <laughs> Your daughter got me. You've moved, haven't you? You have relocated, that's right. And Jessica Curtis, whose daughter's also across the world, but you haven't moved. You are in London still. And in fact, some of your children may also still be in London. So you've got, you've got the absolute hybrid model. So if, if you can keep track of that, you are going to get uh, the whole experience. But I told Hero, uh, who's desperately been trying to sort of duck out of this and not be featured at all, that she's going to kick off. Because you do have the... Over, you've got the data. You've got the website, which is telling you what is happening with parents? How many parents are relocating? What are the things they're thinking about? Give us an overview. And also, we have terrible microphones. So, Paul, you're going to have to give Hero your microphone. Oh, is that working? Oh, yes, it is. Oh, yeah, it is working. Um, yes, um, thanks for that. <laughs> and don't be afraid to shout into your microphone. Right, thank you. Well, um, yes. We, Muddy Stilettos isn't just about um, relocating, actually. I should probably make that clear. We're a lifestyle site for people outside London. So we've got a million users a month, women uh, mostly, who look to us for everything from kind of, you know, boutique hotels and nice walks at the pub and stuff for their children. And that's kind of how we started getting into school reviews and looking at, um, you know, how people are... Uh, particularly over the last you know, sort of 18 months with COVID, how they've been kind of moving out of London, how they, they've been changing their habits and obviously wanted to change lifestyles uh, for obvious reasons. So we've definitely noticed on Maddie Stilettos, no question, you know, a, a massive kind of surge in interest on our site for the school reviews because ours are kind of centred, you know, usually outside of London. And also we did a best places to live guide um, where we, because we we're on the ground in all these areas, we we're able to sort of match... Um, the sort of uh, lifestyle elements for people when they want to move with the schools and with the houses. And so um, that's a very long-winded way of saying absolutely there's been a surge of interest uh, of moving from the city into the countryside that we've noticed. And what are the kind of questions you get from your readers and viewers and users of your website about the uh, perils or opportunities of relocation? I think most people, I, they, I don't think most people that we've talked to have seen it as a peril. I think that, you know, when you're kind of contacting a, so, you know, people like us, you kind of made that decision. You're, you're almost in that spot, aren't you? Thinking, oh, no, you know, I've got to change something in my life. And, and you know, it might be, it, it probably has been, you know, in the last 18 months about the education. You know, if there were a lot of uh, kids who are in state school education, you know, a lot of the parents have been sort of looking to uh, move into the private sector. I mean, you know, if they had problems with secondary schools, but also the parents as well, you know, I think there's that whole lifestyle, you know, that recalibration that we all had to have during COVID when we were just thinking, what is the point of things here? You know, I mean, just to have more time, to have more space, to have a little bit more largesse of your family. Um, those are all the things I think that have been driving this move. 
Brilliant. Well, look, I love this subject, and we're going to start talking to the parents. And the reason I love it is that I'm obviously a born and bred Londoner, but we do have a house in Oxfordshire because of my previous job as an MP. And in fact, we had this dilemma with our kids. Would they be educated in Oxfordshire or London? And so we have, and it's obviously one of the favourite dinner party conversations uh, about whether to leave London or stay put. And we're going to start with Candice, who was a pioneer because she left seven years ago, unwillingly, to Dorset, and maybe coming back to London. Tell us about your experience. Well, my children were at the school that I went to and my grandmother went to, so I was somewhat reluctant. In London? Yeah, in London. Shout out for Norland Place. Anybody got a child there? Wonderful school. And um, <laughs> my husband came back and confessed that he was actually a hobbit from the Shires and not a Londoner and that we were moving to Dorset to somewhere called Wimborne that I've never heard of. And we went down to look at lots of different schools in the countryside and were shown around a bewildering range of facilities and prep schools and chose probably the one that felt the most urban looking back on it at the time because that's how our heads were calibrated and my children loved it and I know that perhaps if they had stayed in London in the way that I wanted them to and wanted them to go to day schools and come home to their mummy every evening and share the stories and the trials and the tribulations of their adolescent life with me that actually they were much happier away at a boarding school doing that with their mates and making some great lifetime friends and at the end of their experience where I am now I've moved back to London. So uh, that's, that's me in a nutshell. Where are the children? Uh, they've now left school okay. uh, last year at school. And um, so be aware that when your children become teenagers, and if they do go to a school in the countryside, their friends will live in quite a large catchment area. So being near a railway is quite good. And, um, but they might well want to come back to London and leave you behind. So make sure that you have something that you love about the countryside to sustain you beyond relocating just for schools. And uh, how was it for you? So your kids go to boarding school and you're in an entirely new environment. How do you, how do you work through that? Knowing as you do, as you said really, that you're, in your view your kids are actually getting a much better education experience. Personal view, but that was your view. Uh, but how is it for you? Because you're having to leave London as well to make that happen. Hold the mic really close to my mouth. Yes. <laughs> like that? <laughs> yes. Right, okay, now feeling a little bit like Kylie Minogue. Kylie Minogue is also relocating, but that's a whole other topic. Really? Yes. Um, it's very hard when your children start at a boarding school if you've come from London and you're used to seeing them every evening to not seeing them every evening and not being as involved in the minutiae and the day-to-day -day of their existence. But you do really have to, when you move to the countryside, try and find something to do other than living through your children, which a lot of parents can end up doing. Um, joining the PTA, endlessly going to matches and following them around the country on their various tours of hockey, cricket and other sports. It's really important that you have something for yourself because when they grow up, which they do very, very quickly in the countryside, bizarrely, I feel, um, you've got to have something that you have returned to that, I, that keeps your identity and your independence, which is why I got a job while I was bringing my kids up in Dorset. I was very lucky to be able to work and parent. Brilliant. Paul, let's uh, ask you. Your child has decided that she can't bear living at home with you anymore and has moved to the countryside. Well, tell us about that experience. And why didn't you follow her? What kind of a parent are you, Paul? Well, we often have that discussion, <laughs> you know, w whether at a dinner party or not, to be honest. Um, but Maria and I both grew up in the countryside, in Norfolk, beautiful North Norfolk, but we didn't know each other at the time. Both ended up in London for our careers. Um, and along came our daughter went to uh, a local, uh, I'm in Bat we live in Battersea, so we're local. She, she went to a local day school, um, and it, it wasn't really working for any number of reasons, not least that just driving around in London traffic, trying to get her to play dates and getting her, you know, from one activity after school to another, it became quite stressful. Um, and guess what, we came to the independent school show, and uh, uh, we started thinking before lockdown, um, you know, isn't there a better life outside London in terms of education? Um, and 
very conscious, having had the opportunity to grow up in a rural setting, our daughter was missing out on nature. And her school's in Dorset. She goes to the prep school in Dorset, um, Hanford School, um, which is the complete antithesis of a day school in southwest London. You know, she gets up in the morning and rides ponies, you know, and um, it's all about climbing trees and being in the outdoors but and close to nature. And in prep school, without the pressure of, you know, the hothouse testing system that you have in London. And we, we wanted to get her away from all of that. So we went on an open day um, and took her with us, um, thinking that it wasn't going to be for her and she would just cringe away from the idea. But by lunchtime, she had made the decision that she was going to leave home at the age of nine and go to Dorset. That's amazing. And why didn't you move with her? Career. Right. And, you know, it's, you know, a, di you it's a difficult decision. It's a difficult decision. Did it cross your... I'm trying to, I'm trying to tease you. Which is unfair of me. Did it cross your mind when your daughter basically said, I want to board and leave London? Very mature, yes. very interesting. Did it cross you and your wife's mind and say, well, let's think about a school which would suit us if we were to move out of London as well? Let's think about, say, moving, I don't know, uh, to Oxfordshire and uh, commutable distance. Uh, and our daughter gets her wish, but we move with her. Did that cross your mind? It was discussed and we looked at the options, but we felt the school needed to be, on, to be beyond the M25. I think schools within the M25, the, the, the girls and boys walk round the puddles rather than through them, to use a metaphor. Um, at Hanford, the girls just walk through the puddles, they don't care. And we wanted her to have that freedom and, and self-expression. Great. Right, I'm going to turn to the Cottesmore parents. Lucy, walking through puddles. Now you... Your daughter's gone to Cottesmore and you moved as well. Yes, that's right. So I actually have three at Cottesmore and my eldest is, a, is my son who at the age of, I think he was eight, he'd been in London day school um, forever and we'd lived in London. My husband was born and brought up in London so he'd been there a very long time. So everyone used to joke about me never being able to get him to leave London ever. And then my eldest said one day, I really want to board and leave London. I don't like the pollution. I don't want to take the school bus. I want more space. I don't like the playground because it's got no real grass. And we felt that we should listen to him. Um, a lot of my friends were quite surprised that we were letting our child choose his own path at that age. But you had secretly been plotting to leave London already, hadn't you? I wouldn't have minded it, um, but my husband was a definite no at that point. Uh, so we went and looked around Cotsmore, and as we went back up the drive, I cried because I knew that the die was cast because he loved it, and we all loved all the children there. And like Paul was saying, it was the country existence is so different and relaxed, and they get still the same into the same fabulous secondary schools. So we weren't feeling like we were compromising on a on the quality of academics, but it was about what else the school could bring. Um, so where do you live now? So, so then our middle son, who we felt was not suited to boarding, said, I want to go to the same school as my older brother, but I don't want to board. Oh. At which point we all said, what are we doing living in a tiny London house? We could move out. My husband's commute is slightly longer, but not significantly so, because we live near Hayward Heath, which is quite a good run in. And so we all moved out last year, and we have a five-year-old as well who's in the pre-prep. And my middle son, who said he didn't want to board, now does three nights a week and doesn't look back. So we really should have your husband here, because clearly you, you are living the dream. How is your husband coping? Actually, weirdly, he's adjusted to it so much more easily and happily than I have. He was quite <laughs> happy to take the train up to Victoria this morning and have a walk up and down the shops. Um, and he's very happy on his mower at home. Right. <laughs> so we've had Candice, who went to Dorset, because her husband got a job there, and that dictated the, that dictated the school. We've had Paul, who stayed put in London, while his uh, very grown-up daughter decided she was going off boarding. We've got Lucy, whose very grown-up son has led the entire family and children down to Cottesmore. And now we've got Jessica, who is the hybrid, who's got children 
at Cottesmore, but children in London, and you're stuck in the middle, whatever. Tell us about your experience. Yeah, I mean, what I would say is that boarding was never my plan. It was never part of my picture that I had in my head when I had my three boys. I always thought we would live happily in London, the kids would be happy, everything would continue brilliantly until they were maybe 11, they would go boarding, but definitely at 13. And so now to have an 11-year-old at boarding, a nine-year-old at boarding, he started at eight, and my six-year-old with me still in London is, a, is something I'd never imagined would happen. And I, I agree with a lot of what everyone said, and we kind of put together our own little version of it, that my eldest son being in London, it became in the afternoons trying to get, get them home from school after their activities, after all their clubs, it was 7 p.m., an hour of homework, bedtime, it all became a very stressful, unrelaxing. He was sitting in the car for hours and it was, it was affecting our family life and our daily life. And so I sort of thought about maybe looking at boarding schools. Um, the school that he was at sort of recommends boarding schools, so we had a look at all of them. And there was something magical about Cotsmore again. Um, Co-ed boarding, the children can be children. They're running around with mud splattered on their heads and faces and happy and it just, it made me feel bad for my children that they were stuck on wherever, Hammersmith, in a traffic jam trying to get them to swim club in time. It was, it was, it became very obvious that how I thought our lives would turn out were not, was not going to pan the way we thought. So my eldest son started boarding school. It was the best thing ever done for him. He comes home happy. He's got, I think the way we see it is exactly as you said before, the hybrid model. He's got the best of all worlds. He's got life in the countryside, comes home to London. And then obviously my second son saw the same thing happening and saw how happy he came home, all the adventures he was having, going paddle boarding in the lunch break. You know, it, it, it's a different life. And then my middle son started at eight, which is again something I never thought we would do. Sorry, that's not me. I think, I think that's over there. <laughs> okay, and, um, and now I'm trying to keep my six-year-old at home as long as possible. So that, that's... But, we, but the question we all want to know is, you know, once they're all out of London schools, are you going to move? Well, no, so this is exactly the thing. So, so I can't, we kind of thought when Max started boarding school, we were going to move to the countryside. We looked at houses, it all... It was all that was our idea, was then to stop my older son boarding. All three would go to Cotsmore and all be day children. And we were looking at all these houses. We can all... It's, you know, lovely houses that you can get there. And it was always the same answer. Whenever we were asking why the families were moving, it's again back to what you were saying. Um, all the family stories were the same thing. The children were all 18, 19, 20. They were all back in London, and the families were all selling up. And I've got an 11-year-old, and I suddenly thought, that's going to be us in 8, 9, 10 years. Why would I not give my children the best of all worlds and we stay in London? and just enjoy London. And London's become alive again. It, it, it's, it's got its spark back. It's, it's giving us the best of all worlds. 